Guys, as long-term interest rates are now rising to levels not seen since 2007, a lot of investors have been betting on the 20-year government treasury ETF called TLT, and they are betting that interest rates have peaked and they expect rates will fall when we hit a recession in 2024. The problem is that they have been making this bet for many months now and have been wrong to the tune of about $10 billion in losses so far. An article on Bloomberg talks about this and shows how much they stand to gain or lose for drops or increases in interest rates from here. So are these investors correct and just early or are they wrong and stand to take much more losses as long-term interest rates go higher? If you are considering moving your investments from shorter-term treasury bills to longer-term bonds, what are the risks you take for taking on that longer duration, which makes longer-term bonds much more sensitive to interest rates? Let's take a look. So Bloomberg says dreams of big bond gains backfire with 10 billion ETF loss. So all of this money is flowing to TLT despite an epic drawdown because of the rare chance for double digit returns at the long end. So they say Wall Street pros have been sinking record sums of cash into the TLT in a high conviction bet that interest rates have peaked and all year long they've been wrong with an estimated $10 billion loss. But that's still not stopping a cohort of dip buyers braving the worst market drawdown in decades. So why do they continue to buy this thing as it goes down? Because even a modest rebound in long dated government debt would spark bumper returns. So they're expecting interest rates to go down with a recession and that would make longer term bonds increase in value by a lot. So the iShares 20-year treasury bond, TLT, has $39 billion assets under management and has attracted a record $17.6 billion so far this year. But the price of TLT is about 50% lower than its 2020 peak. So they say that the TLT is the poster child for fighting the Fed. You're betting that they're going to crash the economy and be forced to lower rates. And so that's why so many people are getting into TLT. But here they say people using TLT are professionals. It's not grandma, it's pro trade. Well, it's not that pro of a trade to keep losing money and keep putting money into something if it's still going down. I don't know if this is an article to try to get retail buyers to bail out the so-called professionals by buying TLT to help get the price back up. So here's a price of the TLT and you see just January of 2023, it was close to 110. Now it's in the low 80s. But this is why people are buying it because with the 20 year treasuries at around 5%, a drop of just 50 basis points or in other words, half a percentage point would deliver a total return of more than 11% over the next 12 months. And that 11% means that you get 5% coupon from the 20 year treasury, plus the price of the TLT will increase by about 6% if the 20 year treasury is dropped by about half a percentage point. And they say on the flip side, a half a point rise would only result in a loss of about 1.1%. And that's because TLT will go down 6%, but you'll have that 5% coupon, so your loss will only be like 1%. So they see it as kind of a lopsided trade. Heads, I make 11%. Tails, I only lose 1.1%. All right, they say the risk reward for duration is extraordinarily favorable right now, and it's just the bond math, right? But Bloomberg says that they estimate that more than 10 billion of cash has been burned by TLT this year, judging by the fund's current assets relative to its lifetime flows, right? If you compare it to a much shorter duration, like on the two-year yield that are about 5.07%, a half a point jump would produce about 4.6% and a half a point drop would produce a gain of 5.5%. So not 
much of a big difference compared to the 20 year. And you can see the 12 month total returns based on different yields here in this table, right? So for a two year treasury, a one and a half percentage point rise, you'll make 3.7% total in a year. And if it falls the same amount, you'll make 6.5%. But for a 10 year treasury, you will lose 5.8% if it rises one and a half percentage points and you will make 16.4% if it falls one and a half. And for the 30 year, it's even more pronounced. You have a 15.7% loss versus a 33.5% gain. And at real extremes, if interest rates rose three percentage points in the next 12 months, your 30 year treasury would lose 30.4% of its value versus if it fell three percentage points, which is what some people may think that the Fed is going to lower rates by a lot if we hit a recession and we're going back to 2% or something like that, you would have a 74.7% gain from that. So let's look at a real world example of how the price of bonds differ when interest rates change. So let's say this is a 10 year bond and it is paying 5% and you just bought it today. So it has 10 years left and you paid a hundred dollar face value. And this is what you will receive in 10 years plus the 5% interest a year. But the same day you bought it, the interest rates for the 10 year changed to 6%. Now <laughs> that doesn't happen overnight, but just for the example, what does the value of this bond become? It becomes 92.56, so you lose 7.5% on the value of the bond. But now same situation, but now it falls one percentage point the same day you buy it. What is this value of this bond now? Well, now it's worth 108, so you made 8% on the value of the bond. And if we do a 30-year, it's even more sensitive. So a 30-year... At 5%, the rates change to 6%. What is the value of this now? Now it's only 86. So you lost 14% just from a rise in interest rates by one percentage point. And if interest rates go to 7%, what happens? Your bond is now worth 75 or you lost about 25% of the value of your bond. So this is the risk of trying to buy a really long bond right now, thinking that rates have peaked at 5%. Uh, 5% is not very high. This has been considered normal for many, many years. But let's say you buy it at 5% and it goes up to 7% in a year or two. You're looking at a pretty big loss on the value of your bonds. Now, on the flip side, if you think we are going into a recession and they're going to lower interest rates and the 30 year is going to go from 5% down to 3%, well, the value of your bond goes up by about 39%. And so this is what these people are buying TLT for because they want that big jump that they're going to get if interest rates fall even just half a point, one point, something like that. And so they see this as a good bet. They say the overall rate is big enough that you make such a meaningful return on the cash flow that you're now actually paid to take on the long-term risk. Now, this guy, FM's president and CIO, doesn't say how long they've been buying these longer-term bonds and if they're sitting on losses because they got in too early or not. I don't know. But it sounds like he is because it says, if you want to earn this, you're going to have to accept some short-term volatility that's amplified by the duration factor. But if you bought in today, you get this experience and it doesn't exist forever. And even in the options market, TLT's open interest for call contracts is close to a 20-year high relative to bearish puts. So it seems they're really talking their book. Maybe they're have these big losses and they're trying to get people to buy this thing, the mom and pops, because here's another reason for enduring duration demand. Should the U.S. economy fall into a recession, an ensuing bond rally would cushion portfolios from stock losses. Now, just because a bunch of investors are betting on TLT to go higher, it does not mean that they are right. And with governments cutting back on buying our debt, and our spending increases going out of control, it is not unreasonable to think that long-term rates can go higher. Historically, a 5% 30-year bond is actually cheap. 
My first mortgage in 1996 was over 9%, I believe. And of course, the realtor told me to lock in my mortgage right now because rates are going higher, of course. Now, I would guess that 5% on the 30-year bond is not where rates will peak. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.